So we're talking about the holidays and being energetically sensitive and what that means in relationship to food and how you consume food and how you ingest food. And that overall feeling of um, actually craving food even after you've eaten. So I don't know if this has happened to you before, let me know, hands up. You're at a holiday dinner and um, or event and you've had a full meal and you are suddenly still still hungry even though your brain is like dude we ate like a ton of stuff there is no way you're still hungry so if that's ever happened to you let us know and this we're going to tell you why this happens okay especially if you are energetically sensitive um or an empath what can happen in the holidays is think about it it's a gathering of a group of people granted you know that they're your family uh, but sometimes not right some extended relatives or guests that you have and that whole big gathering is a whole bunch of energy right a whole bunch of energy from a whole bunch of people who have a whole bunch of issues <laughs> And sometimes some of those issues are related to food, right? And when we sit around a holiday table, we're all looking for comfort, right? Comfort food is all about holidays. Holidays is all about comfort and family and everybody stuffing your, our faces with sugar and fat and all kinds of good stuff because it makes you feel good right it actually triggers feel-good hormones um, or energy or feelings whatever you want to call it so when you are in a large group like that and you are empathic you can not only just empath somebody else's energy but you can absolutely wait for it <laughs> empath someone else's hunger right and now here's the key that hunger does not necessarily have to be a person who is embodied in the form okay let me say that one again because that's really kind of like out there a little bit right you can empath disembodied beings or souls or you know what we call the hungry ghosts right these beings do not have bodies Right. And so they when they cross over, when they don't move over and cross over, they get stuck in this plane, in this dimension and they can um, they they want you to eat so they can empathically feel what it feels like to eat. I know it's a little weird, but it happens all the time. You could literally have an energy in your space that is hungry. OK. And so what that can do is they empathically impact your energy fields you then think you're hungry and it's really weird because you can actually feel the craving of wanting something else to eat if this happens a lot to you it can usually happen right after you've eaten a meal or right after you've eaten a really large meal. So it's when that energy, now maybe you're empathing a family member who's hungry. Have you ever had that happen? Is that you empath someone else across the country that maybe you're connected to, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your dad, maybe it's a spouse or something, and they're hungry. And you call them up and you're like, yeah, oh man, I have a really big craving for chocolate or I have a really big craving for whatever. And you get on the phone with them later and they're like, oh yeah, me too. I had this craving for whatever. It was crazy, but then it went away. Um, so these are kinds of the energetic connections we talk about between people. It also relates to boundaries. If you have hungry ghosts who are empathically sending you messages to eat because they want to feed off of your energy and that empathic reaction related to food, you have what we call porous boundaries. <laughs> that means they um, I found a way into your four spiritual bodies and they are literally impacting your reality. Now listen, here's the thing. If you've got hungry ghosts following you around, you're going to gain weight at a very advanced rate because you're technically 
eating for two, except you're not, <laughs> you're not pregnant. It's an disembodied energy that is empathically um, affecting your reality. We talk a lot about this in our shifting into higher consciousness discourses about um, all of the energies that can affect your reality. We talked about your your uh, body your soul, your team, but there is also this other energy, we call them the lost souls who find their way onto your team or within your energy fields. But right around the holidays, they get hungry because that's the activity that we're all engaging in. So the best thing to do is to really create strong boundaries. But even before that, you wanna develop the awareness or the consciousness of is this my hunger? Am I really hungry? Or am I empathing uh, a hungry ghost? Time out. This is what you can do. You just take a time out, right? And do a check-in and ask a couple of questions. And those questions are, you know, bring in the awareness first of, okay, I just ate. I'm not hungry. Right, my body cannot feasibly still be hungry after what I just ate, and I'm still craving something else. So, always ask who does that hungry ghost energy or that hunger, who does that hunger belong to? And you will find that if it is not your hunger, it will feel lighter. It's like a lifting up and off of your fields and make sure you send it back. <laughs> Clear your fields and send that empathic reaction of hunger from your hungry ghosts. Send them back to their right and perfect places where they can be received with all relevant and appropriate energetic information and release the empathic sensitivity. Be very, very conscious and aware of when your hunger begins and ends and another hunger starts to kind of come into your awareness, right? When you do that, you want to just make sure you clear your energy fields, identify that it is not yours, it doesn't belong to you, and then remove it from your boundary field. So happy holidays, you guys. Check out our programs if you are interested in learning a little bit more about your energy, your energy system, how to keep it clean and balanced. And um, let us know if you've ever had the Hungry Ghost experience. Drop us a comment below and uh, you know, give us a heads up. Talk to you soon, you guys. Have a great day.